Hi everyone, back again with our final video of these mid-season previews um, where we're going to take a look through the handicaps, we're going to skip through the races one at a time. I don't know what fancies these lads have got, so um, there might be races where none of us have a pick, uh, which I imagine there will be quite a few of those races, and we'll just call upon any little interests uh, that we have right now. Handicaps, quite hard to pick out at this time of year, you never know what's going to, well, like a lot of the races, but you never know what's going to be running, uh, you know, there's ratings to think about and stuff like that. Um, me personally, I've taken a stab, a few of mine could well end up in the main races of the festival. Um, and yeah, it's just a tough one to call really, so we'll start uh, at the beginning and try and work our way through. Uh, you two lads, if I uh, miss a race out or anything, just shout up, um, going through my notes here, which uh, I'm hoping are going to be right. And um, yeah, the Ultima is the first one. Nothing for me in this race. Anything for either of you two guys? Nothing for me, Gary, in the Ultima, no. Uh not not a strong one. I think I would be trusting last year's form, though it's not a race that the Irish do particularly well in. It's one of the few handicaps we've no real interest in. So I wouldn't put anyone off back in the conditional or discoram or anyone like that each way in the 20s, 20 to 5 to 1 bracket, to be honest. It, it's pulled up a few uh, two-time winners in a row, so the conditional might be uh, far away. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what we will do at the end of this, we'll maybe put, because um, we've been putting bets up, we'll maybe pick our strongest two or three um, of the handicaps out. Because like Andrew's saying there, not a strong fancy of his, but um, we'll uh, we'll sort that at the end. Okay, we'll move on to the Boodles. Um, Mark, anything in this? Quite a few horses well, in here like that could end up here, there and everywhere. Yeah, I quite like St. Sam for this. I think they are trying to get it handicapped for this Willie Mallon's horse. But with Gordon Elliott having such a good handle on things in Ireland, I would say it would be nearer the time. I can't I can't make a selection at the moment. I think St. Sam's getting handicapped, but so are many of Gordon Elliott's. I think JP and Gigginstown are going to be fighting it out for a lot of these uh, handicaps. And uh, I don't really have anything, but St. Sam looks like it's been handicapped to go here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Andrew. Yeah, no, no, nothing in the in the boodles, but uh, would echo what Mark's saying about uh, probably <laughs> see what Gordon Elliott horse has been uh, entered with you know a week or two to go that they, they won't be far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, yeah. Gary. One sorry. other horse. Yeah. One other horse that probably isn't going to get into the handicap in the boodles because he's. <laughs> I don't know if he's not trying or he's just no good over hurdles, but Flying Scotsman's done really poorly for Joseph O'Brien this season. I thought he would do a lot better coming from the flat than he's done. If he started to improve his form, he could be one for the Voodles. But um, I have been watching him, but he's been so bad in all his runs that I can't recommend anyone back to him at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, a bit similar to what you guys have said. I do have St. Sam down in my notes. I think they might be deliberately targeting him um, at this one. The other Gordon Elliott horse is in behind Zana here. Um, you would think Colixilos, from what I've said in the other video, is going to end up too good uh, by the time he's, he's run to be in this. I'm not even sure what his rating is now. He might even be up there now. But I just I find it hard to believe that if he's got two... Um, Two good horses. He's going to run them both and end up firing them both at the triumph. He might. I mean, he might not even run Quillix horse again till, till the till the festival and stick him in this. I don't know. Um, the other one that I um, that I picked up was uh, and I, again the pronunciation Tiupu. Uh, I believe it's called. Uh, currently sixteen to one. He will be my pick in this. Um, I think he won last time out. Not sure if he's going to run again, um, but I think he'll be just about the right sort of horse for this. I don't think he'll be good enough to uh, win in the open company, but I think they could hold him back and, and, and go for this. Um, but yeah, again, like with all of them, it's going to be a bit up in the air. So that is the Boodles, and we will move on rather quickly. And I believe the next one is the Grand Annual. No, that can't be right, because that's on... Have they moved the Grand Annual? Yeah, it's changed. Ah, right, yeah, that's the... right, so, I mean, so yeah, that used to be on Friday, didn't it? Yeah, so we've got the Grand Annual on uh, Wednesday now, um, again, I don't have anything in this, um, do, you, do you guys, either of you, Mark? 
I don't have anything, but I think Andrew has one. Okay. Andrew. Yeah, well, I, I just think that there's probably three or four JP horses that could win this race, to be honest. Uh, the one I've landed on is Aramax, won the Boodles last year. Uh, you just look at his campaigning, it's awfully similar to Chosen Mate last year for Gordon Elliott. Two nondescript runs in beginner's chases where he, you're, he's given rides of no substance and then has remarkably improved for the application of a first-time tongue-tie and also the application of a bit of each-way cash, I think, uh, on the weekend uh, to beat Port Stanley in a beginner's, which will, will get him into the race. He does lack a bit of experience, but uh, I think he'll run here and I think he's got every chance at, at 20-1. to 1. Okay, okay. Um, hey, Gordy. Yeah? I just wondered, I did see it, someone posted today, I just wondered if maybe the winner from last season, Chosen Mate, was getting his handicap marked down as well. He doesn't look like he's put a whole lot of effort in this season yeah. so far either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do, uh, I'm asking you two guys, because I've just seen he's in the betting at a half-decent price. Do we think Eldorado Allen will end up here, or will he be too, too highly handicapped? I'm not sure what his mark is at the minute. I don't have him in front of me. I suppose he could end up here. Yeah. You just have to be... Um, geez, I'd be so sceptical about these Tizard horses. So they've just been running stink all year. Yeah, like the minute. Like, but I've just... I, I've expected... Like, I've been waiting kind of months for them to... The tide to turn. And the tide's yeah. still out. Like, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would be... Backing El Dorado Allen in the, uh, whatever it's called now, the Bet Victor, the Paddy Power at the November meeting next year, over two and a oh, half right. miles. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a long-term Brucey long -term, bonus yeah. for anyone viewing. <laughs> okay, well, if I had to bet in this race and these were lining up, that's probably why I'd stick my money on, but uh, hoping that the Tizard form, as Andrew said, had turned the tide by then. Um, okay, so... We will swiftly move on to our next one, which is the pre-temps. And um, I have got a horse. I'll start you off with a massive one that's more than likely not going to run here. Um, I tip, uh, tipped him up and backed him last weekend. And I thought he was running really well till he clattered a fence. Uh, and uh, I think after his last two runs, I'm hoping that he's qualified for this. And I'm hoping they're going to send him back hurdling. And at 50 to 1, that is goal and fortune. Um, I know it's an unlikely destination for him, but I noticed he qualified for it. Um, the last two runs over fences, I think they'll have been expecting a bit better out of him, to be honest. Um, and I just think they could end up sending him back over hurdles to run in this. And at 50 to 1, I would be having a little dabble on him. Um, Andrew, you got anything in this? No, uh, no, it's boring, but I, I suspect the boss of Oscar will be very close. But. Um, I couldn't back him at the price he is. Okay. Mark? I agree with Andrew that if the boss is Oscar, he only gets a couple more pounds, he'll be hard to beat because Elliot's got all these plots and this is obviously one of them. But the British Handicapper might give him another eight pounds and then it make it very hard for him. Um, call him a fire if he went up in distance. Could be one for this as well, but I don't really have a bet in it, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'd say on the goal, unfortunately, I just noticed his rating over hurdles was about right for those that have won this race down the years. And, um, you know, it, it, this, this is his sort, of, uh, his sort of distance. All his power form, especially over hurdles, comes at two and a half or less. So I just think it could be a little sneaky one for him to uh, to have a look at. You never know. Um, okay, so we will move on once again to the plate. Um, Mark, we'll start with you, mate. You got one for this? I don't really have one, but I was watching another video and I did hear a guy come up with quite a decent selection for this. I just wondered if maybe it's a B bit high in the handicap, and I just tend to think the Irish horses are going to win most of the handicaps. But Midnight Shadow at 25 to 1 was put up on that SM media video, and I thought it wasn't too bad a selection considering he was second to Chatham Street Lord. That race where Chatham Street Lord was just chucked in, you know. Um, but he, he's got good course form against Champ and, um, you know, he's not the worst bet in the world, but I wouldn't have a bet in the race, but I thought it was a decent selection at 25 to 1. Mm, yeah, OK. Um, Andrew, yourself? Uh, no, 
uh, not, nothing for this, which is like la- last year, probably my, my best handicap bet was, was simply the bet. So I had him from a month or two out, but uh, I've absolutely nothing in this race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, myself as well, I don't really have one. If you ended up in here, um, which I, I have no idea where this horse is going to run at the festival, but it's just because I'm a fan of the horse more than I actually think he's, he's um, a likely winner. But I like uh, Wave of the Sea. He's let me down a lot recently, but uh, if he was to fall back into a handicap, I'd probably have a little dabble on him, but I don't really have much um, much that's statistically or anything that stands out because it's done well that's uh, making, me, making me bet in this race. So we'll leave that one there. It certainly won't be in my top handicap bets. Okay, we will move on to uh, the Kim Muir, I believe is next. Um, again, this is one for me. I don't even have a tinkle in this one. I don't even have a slight fancy, so uh, I'm not going to put anything up. Um, Andrew, have you either had a bet or got a fancy in this one? Yeah, uh, quite sweet on one in this, actually. Uh, uh, another one of these Gordon Elliott horses, uh, Run Wild Fret. Uh, I think he's uh, been tailor-made for this race. Very similar profile to Milan Native last year. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Rob James is riding him either. Uh, well, I don't know actually what the the amateur rider situation is going to be, but if it is amateur riders, wouldn't surprise me if Rob James is on him, claiming a couple of pounds off his back. Uh, I think he's got every chance. and He might be another one of these Gordon Elliott horses. He'd rock up to Cheltenham, and the uh, application of that infamous first-time tongue-tie uh, might see... Uh, a stone's worth of improvement like it did last year from a land native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just on that, um, I don't know if either of you have uh, seen the Weird In podcast today, but um, Kevin Blake and that were talking about um, very unlikely that the amateur riders are going to be um, at the festival is is the talk of things at the minute, so there could be a right shake-up um, a shake up of things there. Um, Mark, have you had a bet in this one? Oh, do you have a fancy? Oh, well, mate. I might have, but I don't know. Uh, I also agree about Runwell Thread. He's been on my radar as a wee bit of a non tryer non-jigger for a while. Um, but the one I've got is if Nicky can keep him below 145, I think this is this would be a snip for Dicky Diver if we could get him in here. He's 142 at the moment, but I think he's got to run one more time. I don't know if they can keep his mark at 142 and get another run in, but if they can't, I've bucked him any race at 60-1. Now, Nicky says he's got the national hand chase, but I think if they get him in under 145 and he meets the criteria here, they're going to be missing a trick if they don't go into this because he, he'd take this lot apart of less than 145. So I'm hoping he gets in here on because I'm on any race. So I, is that what you, uh, I remember you putting him up. It was any race, was it? Yeah. And I think if they could get him in here, <clears throat> three mile two off one, off nearly top weight probably if uh, if there's no amateur riders at the meeting Nico could ride him yeah I'd love that but whether they can sneak him in under the handicap mark with another run having to be made I don't know but if mm. not run while Fred would be for me as well yeah yeah um, okay I just noticed uh, far classes in the betting area they stepped him up to three mile last time didn't they and I think he finished um and third behind, I can't remember who's behind now. I mean, that's a horse I've liked over the times. That's just the reason it stood out to me. But I'd have to take more of a look at it. Uh, probably see him again before before certainly putting him up. Um, okay, we will um, move on once again. If I can bring the next one up. Let's get down my notes. Um, the Fox Hunters. Um, Andrew, you got a bet in the, in the Fox Hunters? Uh Pretty simple. I, I think last year's winner will win again. It came to pass. Comes alive around Cheltenham. But uh, mm-hmm. Fox Hunters is never a, a race to be, especially now that Shantou Flyer has uh, retired, uh, who was one of my favourites. Uh, it's not a race to be uh, steaming in on from a betting perspective, I don't think. Mm-hmm. No. Um, leave you to last mark. Uh, I'd say I don't like the favourites, but I like the favourite in this. I like Bill Away. Um, put him up last year, and uh, uh, I, I've just followed the horse all along. And I think um, I, I think the horse is a cracking horse, and I will be backing him in this. Mark. Yeah, I go with Bill Away as well because I think 
some of these races are just a cheap winner in the top trainer title, and uh, Billy Mullins will be looking for that, looking for that winner. But I came to, it came to pass for Ashton last season, really. He came, well, went past him like he's a tree, but I don't think they'll get caught out twice, two years in a row. I think Billaway will be really hard fit. A year old, uh, cause he was a young horse last season when he ran in it. I think he'll be ready to ramble for this this season. Mm-hmm. And Willie might need this winner, so yeah, I think he'd be for me. Okay. Yeah. All right then, and we will move on to um, the I believe the last one. I think there's only one left in there, the Martin Pipe. Um, so yeah, um, I tell you what, I'll start us off here. Um, as I spoke earlier on, and I know this, you've you've just back, uh, backed this horse earlier on, but I, I'm hoping that uh, Fakira, Fakira, however you want to pronounce it, um, gets beat at the Dublin Racing Festival and that they end up sending him here. Um, I just think the hill, I know it's two mile five, probably looks like he wants even further than three mile, as you say, but I think it could be a, a nice little nab for them. Um, another, if he wasn't, he's currently 12 to one, non-runner, no bet. So I would take that. I think that's a, that's a good price, non-runner, no bet. So um, that's where my money would be. If I found out it wasn't here for definite, uh, another horse that I like, and again, I don't know if he's going to run here because he could be in a couple of the races, is Power of Pause. Um, he's currently 20 to 1, non-runner, no bet. Um, so there are a couple that I like, but for the sake of non-runner, no bet, I'll go for Kira because at least I'll get my money back. Um, Mark, come to you next. I have no bet. I'll leave Andrew. I think Andrew's horse is... Uh, uh, yeah. He's, he's on at good prices. I don't know if I'd take it now, but I'll leave Andrew to talk about it. I don't have a bet. Okay. Yeah. I've just realised I've actually missed a race out of an but We'll come back to that in a minute. Andrew, yeah, you you have had a bet in this, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, backed wide receiver earlier in the year. Uh, 25's any race, which looks decent enough now. Um, mm. As Mark said, he's probably he is short and he's turned into a bit of a wise guy's horse, which I never like. Um, when everyone thinks it's it's an absolute shoe in, he's probably my best handicap bet just because of the price I have. Um, but look, he's got a decent chance. He fits a few trends of Gordon's that run in the race. And he's got a fair enough chance. But as we saw with Column of Fire last year, it was the wise guy's horse. Things can go wrong, so. Um, we'll have to just keep the fingers crossed and hopefully uh, things can go right and he can do the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a few, I think there's a few in, in, in this race that could, uh, you know, it'll just take one. If you if a few of them end up in the same race together at Cheltenham and one of them, I know I've just mentioned Fakira, but there's the other ones like Irascible. Irascible looked really good uh, in, in behind last time. But if he comes out again and finishes third or fourth, you could see him in here. And I think he'd be a good bet as well. But I think there's a few of them like that that uh, we could end up seeing. Uh, Mr. County Hurdle out. Um, so we'll go back to that. Um, Andrew, do you have a bet? A bet in that? Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't backed anything, but uh, I'm very interested to see what they're gonna try and do with Master McShee. Um, he didn't run in the Grade Two on the weekend. I think they'll probably try and win a big handicap with him. I don't know whether they'll try and win a big handicap at the Dublin Racing Festival and then run him in the Supreme, or whether they'll wait to Cheltenham and try and run him in this. I think he'd have a massive chance if he came here. Off his mark, off his current mark, and one over in England. I quite liked the way he did it on the weekend. Is Edward Stone? I think a fast run, two miles. I think that would be right up his street. I don't know whether he'd. Uh, I know they're they're targeting the Betfair hurdle. If he goes and wins that, he's probably scuppered for this. But uh, he's the type of horse I'd keep on the right side of in in any in, in either the Betfair hurdle or the county. I think he'll go very close in one of the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Mark. I've got a right flyer here, but it's going to depend on a few things. If uh, Nicky can get another poorish run in Flint or Soccer, I wouldn't be surprised if the application of cash bought out big improvement on the day in the county hurdle, <laughs> a bit like San Roy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's just a speculative sort of one that I sort of plucked out of the air, but. I don't know if it'll happen, but like after its first run, you could see it happening if he if he came second or third next time out, got a handicap mark, and came in here, and all of a sudden started galloping really well, and cash came for him, a bit like Sam yeah, Roy yeah. last season. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I, you never know, mate. You never know. Um, what uh, what price is he at the minute? Oh, he's no know. price at all at the moment. I don't think he's even not quoted. Priced. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking aloud at the moment. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because that's what JP does. Yeah, wouldn't be. Uh, wouldn't be the first time that it's happened, mate. That is. That is for sure. Um. I, I don't have a massive fancy in here. Um, not even sure what the what the intentions are with him. Um, look too much into it. But Alart is twenty five to one, twenty to one. I'm not sure. Let's say I don't know where he's where he's into. If he was turned up, turned up here, I'd quite fancy him. I think his marks half decent. He's off about one forty. I think one forty two at the minute. So um, that would be mine. But it's not a strong fancy. Okay. Um, we will finish off by giving out of those that you've either put up um, out of the handicaps. Give me three that you would um, you would put some some free money on as single bets or or, or a, a Trixie or something. Um, start with you, Andrew. Uh, wide receiver Martin Pipe, uh, Runwell Fred, Kim Muir, and. Um, Edward Stone in either this or the or the Betfair hurdle, whatever one he he's, uh, <laughs> maybe the Betfair hurdle. But if he was to to bypass it and run in the county, I think he's got a he's got a massive chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I like Edward Stone as well. Um, okay, Mark, um, yourself, give me three, mate. I don't I've caught really you a bit off guard here, lads. I know, but um, you are. I don't have. I don't have three. I would put all. Give us a I'd couple then. My money. I just go Dicky Diver and the Kim Muir non runner. No bet. If he gets in under one four five, I cannot see how he can not be a good bet in that race under one four five. But how they can get him only at three pounds, I don't know. But if he does, then he's my bet for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mate. Okay. Um. Again, I said I haven't really put through it myself, but I would go with uh, Bill Bill away in the Fox Hunters um, at five to one. I would go non runner no bet uh, Fakira in the Martin Pipe at twelve to one, and I'll sit the biggie in there. We'll go goal on fortune in the pre temps final at fifty to one. Um, I'd take the non runner no bet there. Actually, I'm not sure what price he is non runner no bet, but say if you could get thirty threes or something or, or forties even at best, I would, I would take non runner no bet. But um, yeah, that that will there will be man. Um, handicaps are usually left till quite late for me, to be honest. So um, not massive fancies for me. Okay, that um, that calls an end to these short um, short videos, a series of videos that we've put up. Um, talk the lads. We may be back with some more at some point. Um, it's been uh, good fun putting these out. I've really enjoyed it, lads. Um, thanks very much for joining us, and um, we'll put these videos up very soon. And Good luck for the week. Speak to you both soon. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Right, Cheers, thanks Gary. Thanks, Gary. And thanks, Andrew.